hello, thank you, etc. Well, as you can or you can't, but anyways, the old, very well abused mat should suggest that, uh, well, I'm just in the middle of actually trying out stuff, so this is more of the proper videographic thing rather than anything thought about before, but yeah. Uh, next steps in the stuff about etching and PCBs, which kind of got out of hand, but you know, let's run with it. So this is or was the first PCB that I've done, you've seen it in the shorter video, if you haven't, I don't know, watched it or whatever. This is the last one, or the second one, which I didn't even bother to, you know, like, clean the toner off. It keeps the oxidation away, which is nice. Now, as for this stuff that I'm doing here, I mean, cutting PCBs. Again, this one's 15 years old, FR4, which is like epoxy resin and uh, glass fiber. You know, stuff that will destroy blades, probably so, so uh, depends on the type. But anyways, again, trying to think of the simplest approach, and by simplest I mean less, least amount of work, least amount of tooling, you know, something that you can do and relax. And this is kind of relaxing. So, at this point, what I have learned, so... Again, let me try to do it like an intro tutorial kind of a thing. Where again, this is not the best way to do it, it's just the way that I'm currently doing that. And as you can see, it works. So, can be that stupid. Uh, tooling, first thing, you need something to be like cutting on. And you want pretty much two things. First of all, you're going to make horrible scars and deep cuts into it. So nothing that you actually care about. Or, you know, like, it's designed for that, like a cutting mat. And the second thing, or the second parameter, which this does not, so, like, it's not good any, anymore. Which is, like, being smooth enough for the stuff not to slip, or both being, like, smooth, or just, like, non-slippery, not... I mean, this is not slippery, but it's so abused that it's not really, you know, holding stuff, which makes stuff more difficult. But anyways... You don't want to be cutting it on any surface that you care about, so that's the first thing. Second thing, in terms of a knife, I mean a utility knife, you're going to eat the steel like there's no tomorrow, so again, nothing that you care about or stuff that's cheap. I mean, I have like a whole set of spare blades for this, so I don't really care, I mean, this was already used. But yeah, sharp, hard blade, you're gonna need that, I mean, you're cutting into glass, I'm cutting into glass, just... Ooh. It's like ridiculous, but it works. Then, I would say some sort of a linear device, just to, you know, like go, like, like go with the lines. And now, I think in terms of tooling, do we need anything more? Not really, and it doesn't have to be ruled, it's not like you're measuring anything. You just need a guide, oh yeah, that's the word, a guide, which you want like to make stuff as stable as possible when you're doing the cuts. So, in terms of practicalities, because I have, I have actually learned something in the like last an hour or two, is that the first cut that you want to make, like when you're just starting, like align it, you know, like in the middle, etc, etc, whatever you want, make a light pass. You don't need much pressure, just want to, you just want to like score it. And that's important. Why? Because once you score it, then even if this wobbles around, etc., the knife edge, at least, you know, in my experience, goes into that groove and just, like, scratches it more, which is exactly what you want. So that's the first tip. The second tip is that you need to do those, like, scotches, like, eat at, at least at the surface on both sides, and getting it aligned between those sides is kind of difficult or, you know, like, I don't know, if you were to actually use a proper ruler and try to measure it, maybe you'd have better um, results, but I was too lazy, so just kind of like, when you do it like on one side, you will see like a brighter mark, because you know, you've removed the material, so it shows. So kind of align it on the other side. Anyways, the point is that you need it on the both sides. You cannot just you know, like scratch this surface and you know, like be happy, it's not gonna work. You need both sides, 
the more aligned you are, the better results you're gonna get. So yeah, the next thing is that you actually don't need that many passes. It's not like you're trying to cut it. You're not gonna like no, you know, given enough time, you're gonna cut anything. But you don't need you know, like multiple passes, it's like couple of them, three, four, five. The point is that once you get some of the scoring on both sides, just try to bend it. And then you will feel and probably also hear if it's actually giving or not. And you know like on those ones, which those by the way are like inch by inch, like square inch. Just happened, you know, like two uh, 25 millimeters, yeah, 25 millimeters by 25 millimeters, like squares. In any case, for such a small cut, it's really easy to do it. But you know, as I was separating, like because I passed down uh, the columns, so in, like those three. So this one were long, and again, it's like easier we have like stuff to grab that way. In any case, I mean, you start with those, score them, you kind of feel it like moving, but not really, then add more scores. For those, you don't need it, like a couple of scores on one side, a couple of scores on the other side, and they just break away, which is nice. It makes it faster, you know, as you go. So, you know, both sides of the stuff, and yeah, that's actually the fourth, I think it's the fourth. Anyways, the fourth tip is, you know, don't need that many scores, just try to like wiggle it, like try to break it. If it doesn't break with like too much force required, then add more scores. Like you don't have to start with like yeah, trying like for half an hour just to cut it, because you're not probably gonna get there. And yeah, if like are you cutting it, are you making stuff well, you should be ending up with a lot of what I suppose is like resin, glass, and also the metal from your blade. I mean, you're going to destroy it in this process. So, yeah, it works, you just break it apart. I'm not really sure about like smaller cutouts. In theory, they should be simpler, but then you still need to grab onto stuff. So, you know, it's always like, it's never really linear in terms of how much work, effort, etc., etc., you need to put in to get good results. But so far, I'm happy. And these are like not sand, they're just like raw cuts. And again, this is the first board, which is a test board. For this one, I'm pretty sure I will try to uh, like align the both sides better, because then you're going to get like the better edges. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it works. And it's actually, you know, my initial idea was, <laughs> was to bring out uh, an angle cutter and my angle cutter is actually a single angle angle cutter <laughs> it's a zip tie you know like a baby angle cutter and they actually give you like a multi-purpose you know air quotes uh, disc for that which I think is like a piece of metal with some tungsten whatever carbide like inserts at some points and I guess that would require less arm strength than using the knife and just breaking it but then again you're like you don't want to breathe glass i mean really you do not want to do that so again just the setup time would probably be more than just getting it done here so you know i mean a utility knife the cheapest you can get just hardened steel blade score it on both sides then break it and yeah it works uh, oh, and also by the way at this point very much these are not cosmetic and i mean the gloves I wouldn't be like trying to actually break it with my bare fingers. I mean, it's already, this requires quite a lot of strength. So on that notion, I mean, use gloves and, you know, like if you're lacking the arm strong up like parameters, use a vise, use a clam. I mean, just think about it. I mean, like, you know, raw strength is, it's nice to have, but it's not really a, you know, a problem solver or anything like that unless you're in a pinch but we're not here so at least for this part i'm happy enough i will transfer like exactly the landings and you know like trying to get like i will actually use the better mat to get cleaner cuts on this one and i think i will cut it first so like we'll see still the point is that having those you know this set of nine 
I can already go to the next step, which is the most interesting to me, which is trying to plate these uh, with different metals, just see how it works. I mean, I have some, I think I have zinc and aluminum sulfates, so you know, just trying to like see how it actually works, because again, practice is, uh, is all. So yeah, I think there will be more segments to this installment, but for the time being, and this being late of today, hope you've enjoyed that, and uh, thank you, see you then, or, you know, soon, in terms of the video, it's all time travel. And today is tomorrow, and I think it's time for the second and last segment of uh, this PCB cutting thing. And this part actually won't be about cutting, I will not be cutting anything on camera, because I think there's uh, some very important context missing here just to get you the idea of what I'm doing, why I'm doing, and so on. But before that, I have a correction to the previous segment, where I showed you you know, and told you that I was cutting columns. No, I was actually showing you correctly, just telling you wrong. I mean rows, not columns, so cutting rows. I, and I apologize. I don't script my videos. I don't even make a bullet point list of what I want to talk about. And in exactly the same, with exactly the same approach, I do not edit my videos. I just glue them together in command line. <laughs> so, you know, no previews or anything like that. Uh, with the point being that I want this to be focused on doing stuff, not anything else, and the videos are just, you know, a, a form factor, a vehicle, if you want to do that. So now, I think before we move forward with this stuff, we need to take a step backwards and actually talk more about the idea about the maker's mark or a nameplate. So I had two main constraints that I set for myself is that first of all it needs to be handmade by me which means by definition that you know you can order PCBs I think even like as little as 10 pieces in UK or in China and it's affordable but then it won't be made by me so you know this kind of stuff won't work you know like stamps you can get stamps made there's like a number of ways but not made by me so you know no second constraint I want this stuff to be reasonably repeatable and by this I mean you know like a corporate logo it has to be recognizable which means that you know hand painting or like just signing your work which is nice it's not the same thing as a nameplate or a maker's mark to me it has to be you know doesn't have to be perfect I actually prefer it not to be perfect but close enough that you know after you've seen five of them you won't like you will recognize the sixth one at the first glance. So, continuing the ideas like with PCBs. So as you see here, I just have like the black stuff, the toner, it's the initial, like the first layer mask. This is just to get the copper out and leave it where I want it to be. And this was already an initial idea. Like this is the part of the initial idea that now, you know, like I can use the same approach. So like clean it off, make a different mask, also thermotransfer it on that and then do a whole batch with plating. And by that I mean like non-galvanic plating, which is just interests me because, you know, it's like an older art, you don't need electricity for that. But in any case, you can do layers. So that's the idea, and this is also why I'm not cutting this one. I want to learn enough about the plating process to be able to like add at least one more layer, probably with aluminum, because it's, you know, it's supposed to be shiny. So <laughs> that should be a good choice you know, like highlights or some pattern or whatever on this one, like, and do the whole batch at once and again, have them close enough that they look, you know, good enough. So, with that context, now these ones, mm, being, you know, like, cut out, it's nice because I can try, you know, like, I don't need to do a whole thing and then if I, like, mess something up, have all of, like, all of the plate wasted, I can try different things, you know, like, one by one, it also means like, you know, with smaller physical size, I don't need as much uh, chemical agents, so as much space, etc, etc. And I can do it, you know, in my spare time whenever I have, I don't know, an hour to actually focus on that. So, what I'm thinking is that even though, like, 
the target is to do it with the thermal transfer method, I'm actually going to start by, you know, like hand painting, like making the mask manually, basically. I have uh, selected, you know, like the, for the stuff that I have, it's like a paint marker or like oil marker, whatever that means. I think this is like the highest chance of being useful. Then I have an acrylic marker, which is the same, but you know, different chemistry. And I also have some uh, nail polish, like a clear, quick dry top coat of unknown provenance. I don't even know, like, it's like, doesn't matter. I mean, three different things, nine test pieces. So I think this gives like a nice matrix of like trying different methods of making a mask and then figuring out the chemistry, because that's that's what it's going to be like. How much, how long, does it require higher temperature, you know? Is it going to just eat the copper? I don't know. So like lots of unknowns, but it's a fun stuff, you know, just to explore it and figure it out on your own. So yeah, I think, you know, in terms of cutting, I mean, it's, it's really, I don't think there's that much deep thought needed just to cut PCBs at home with simple tools. So, yeah, I will continue with this stuff, hopefully be able to also uh, record it, or, you know, like, at least post-factum, uh, do a, uh, just log it, basically log it and put it, like, on the internet. I think it's always nice, and the idea is that this should be inspiring in the way that, you know, even with as simple tools as you can get, and even like without being an expert or anything like that, you can do stuff too. So that's what I'm hoping the most like for my audience to get out of it. Just, you know, like try doing stuff. It's really fun. You will learn along the way. And, you know, in general, I think it might even, wow, it should be fun and interesting. So yeah, uh, thank you for watching and uh, see you next time.